So, Genesis 8. Our story begins way before then. It begins on the last day that I streamed. It begins on that Monday. I check my Discord DMs. This is not a sad story, but this is important context for everything else that happened at Genesis, and so I feel like it's important to go into. Renna's having a really tough time. Renna's Tuesday. There's not really any way to say it other than directly. She broke up with me. I was in a polyamorous relationship. Now it's just me and Noodle. That happened uh, on Monday. I have those two days to kind of process everything. On Wednesday, Luca comes over because I'm traveling with Luca. Do I even want to go at this point? You know, is it something that I want to cancel and just not go entirely? But this would be his first major tournament. He's never gone to a major before. I decided to go through with it. Something to note about our BNB. So I'm looking for places to stay because we had to reschedule after uh, Genesis got postponed. We had to get, you know, a new BNB. The closest place I could find is this 19th century Victorian house that has all of this antique furniture, like a king size bed for like $90 a night. We're just flabbergasted at this point. Like you go into the bathroom as well. It's so fancy of a place. There is a couch in the bathroom that I guess you just sit on while, you know, your friend is <laughs> your friend is going to the bathroom and you just chat about your feelings and problems and society. We're just thinking, you know, like it has to be haunted or something. There has to be some catch to it. But no, it's just a really cool place. So yeah, Friday morning is doubles. On the way there, I see a tweet that there is a bird in the venue. The bird is flown around everywhere. The bird lands on the rival setup on stream and the bird then poops on the rival setup, causing the stream to delay for like an hour. I took that as a good omen. Doubles was great. Doubles was an amazing time. I have always loved doubles more than anything else at any tournament. Team with Zaro, we got some good wins in there. Zaro is an amazing doubles teammate to have. And especially considering we never practice doubles, like it's literally just, we go to the tournament. Hey, so you want to win? Yeah, sounds good. Last Genesis we won, this tournament we got second after beating Cake Penguin. That's, that's a win. So doubles is done, singles comes after that. At this point, like I'm not even sure what I want to do for singles. Like, do I want to play Raster? Do I want to play Crag? Anti's even asking me like, you know, who, who are you going? And I'm like, I don't know, I have no clue. But he mentions that he wants to run back on my Raster specifically. So I say, all right, I go up there, fight Anti with my Raster. Decently close the first game from what I remember. Although my keyboard, my damn keyboard disconnects like twice during our set. I had so many keyboard issues during Genesis. Get some cool raster combos, close it out 3-0. I qualify out of my pool winner side. Saturday's where things start to feel a little bit better. I have my workshop pool. I, workshop's really fun for me. I was like labbing the hell out of Anglara. Played more Anglara than Raster or Crag or anything specifically to practice because I wanted to win Workshop. Now the Penguin set is really interesting because before any single Workshop bracket that I enter, I go over every single character. And along the way, along you know my discoveries of everyone else, I try out Maverick. He seems really easy. Like it wouldn't be hard to have him as a pocket pick. So I fight Penguin. I'm down 2-0. I already like hit the Windows key by mistake during one of our sets and I almost have to forfeit a so stock. Let's just play someone simple. Let's play someone easy. I swap to Maverick. I learn how to recover with Maverick halfway through the set because again, I've never actually practiced this character. I've never put in time into learning how Maverick works. I'm just like, haha, funny monkey. <laughs> and so I'm just, I'm just mashing random buttons. You can actually see me. You can actually see me the first time I press down special. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I do like the FGC nod. Like, yeah, that's how that works. I bring it to game five. Penguin pulls out the Olympia and going into this bracket, Olympia is like, everyone knows she's broken. She's the character where it's like, yeah, if you want to do well, just go Olympia. I get a decent lead and I hit the Windows key again. Now, the first time I hit the Windows key in this set, Penguin's like, oh, it's fine. We'll just reset. I'll taunt and then we're good. The second time, Penguin's in the middle of comboing me and he's like, yeah, you take that one. No chance. You take that one. So I'm like, yep, yeah, whatever. 
ISD, and he almost brings it back. Like he almost wins the entire set off of that one SD and it goes to last hit, last stock. That was my favorite set of the entire bracket because I'm literally just no clue mashing with this stupid monkey character and it ends up reverse 3 0 Penguin over the character I've spent so long practicing and laughing and putting time into. So that gets me into winner's finals. I have to fight Soul Rifle. I thought I had, you know, a sense of how bad it was gonna be. I figure, you know, you know, I can hold my own with Anglara. That'll be fine. No. No, no, no. That was the biggest misread I've had in such a long time where it's like, yeah, she's good, but like, she's not that bad. It'll be fine. It was not fine. It was not fine. I get absolutely demolished these bullshit zero to deaths. I can't do shit about. And I end up with third in workshop, which it's third place. I'm used to that. After workshop ends, that's the point where like all of the brackets that I'm excited for, it's all over now. The MSB set happens. I'm thinking, how can I make this as fun as possible for me? How can I just not care, have a good time? So before the set starts, I'm thinking, all right, what if I just went Shovel Knight and try and get one horn kill? So the set starts, it was actually fairly close up until I bought horn and started fishing for Horn every single time, and he would just wait outside the range and kill me for that. And so I knew at that point, like, this strategy is not going to work. The plan is falling apart. What else can I do? You know what else takes zero, zero thought? Spamming Nair with Crag. I three-stock MSB in the Crag ditto by using, like, 80% Nair. And so I want to go Malo. I want to, you know, play Molo because I've played a little bit of them. I think it'd be fun. I hover over Molo on the character select screen. MSB says no. Reaches over to my keyboard, deselects Molo for me and says, no, you're not doing that here. So I say, all right, all right, fine. And I go random. I take him to last hit. He ends up closing it out. I go into loser side, so I have to fight Cake for ninth, which is wild in its own right. But at that point, like, again, I'm at the point where I don't want to stress about it. I'm reporting my scores to George, and he's like, yeah, keep winning, keep doing it. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to win anymore. I want to go home. <laughs> he wins 3-0. Ninth place. That's pretty good. Like, Sego and ZV got ninth. That's not a bad placing. I've never placed lower than ninth in my entire career. Literally not once have I placed worse than ninth in a major. So I'm happy with that. That's a pretty good record, all things considered. I've already proven I'm still a top player in this game. Like Heat Wave, I beat Zaro, I beat Penguin. I had good sets with ZV and Cake who are like, you know, four of the best players in the game right now. I've shown that I can still do it. And Heat Wave answered that question for me. I didn't go to Genesis to answer this question, but Genesis kind of answered the question of, do I really want to do this anymore? Like, do I enjoy singles? Do I enjoy that part of competition? Is it worth going to tournaments for that for me? I have always enjoyed, you know, commentary, doubles, workshop. I've enjoyed all of those things more and singles has kind of become an obligation for me. Normally, if I don't make a top eight, even if I like can't go to the tournament, there's a part of me that's like, yeah, I wish I was there. There's still that bit of me that's like, it'd be fun to be on that stage, you know, competing with them. But I didn't feel that at all this time. Like I watched Genesis top six and no part of me wished to be on that stage. So I think going forward, you know, I announced on Twitter today that like Genesis is probably the last singles bracket that I'm going to enter. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop, you know, going to tournaments if I can, you know, get the donation goals for it and all of that. But I just don't like singles anymore. Not for rivals. And if, you know, I can go to a tournament, compete in doubles, compete in workshop, hopefully commentate top eights. Because I, I love commentary. I really, really love commentary. So if I can start doing commentary for like top eights, that would be perfect for me. I think I'll be happy. Because that's the general direction I'm going in as well. It's like I'm shifting to content stuff. My brand as being the guy who's really good at rivals and plays on a keyboard 
is not all there is to me as a person. There's a lot more that I think I can offer as a content creator, as, you know, as a commentator. I think I can provide value in a lot of other ways. And I'm more excited about those things in comparison. So yeah, that was Genesis.